Good day Grade Tens. Welcome to your next lesson on measurement. In this lesson we're going to be looking at the total surface area of pyramids, cones and spheres. Now it sounds tricky but actually it's not too bad. So let's look at the most basic one, the square pyramid. And the reason this is called a square pyramid is because obviously it makes a pyramid. Anything with a base that goes to a pointy thing is a pyramid and it has a square as a base. Now the total surface area, remember, is just the sum of the areas of all your sides. So what is it going to be in this side? So it's going to be, in this case, it's going to be the area of the base plus the area of the sides. Okay, so the area of the base is a square. So in this case, do you agree that that would be a and since this is a square, this here is also a. So that's going to be a squared plus. Now, if you look carefully, we can see we've got four sides. We've got one, two, three, and four. And it makes sense because we've got four edges on our base. So we've got four sides, and they're all the same, which are triangles. And the area of a triangle is a half times the base which is A, okay, I haven't put the half in yet, so I'll do it now, times by the half, times by the height, and in this case, this height is S, so it's a half base times height. Okay, but now I want to get this in normal terms, so let's pretend that this here is still A, but what you want you to do, instead of calling this S, I want you to call it A squared plus a half four a and then it is hs and the reason i want you to do that is and i'm going to put a big h there is because this height here is called the slant height the slant height if i took this triangle here and I cut it out and I laid it flat, then this would just be the normal perpendicular height. The reason we call it the slant height is because you can see that this side is actually slanted. So that is the slant height, but it is the perpendicular height of that triangle. So I want you to get used to seeing the terminology slant height because we're going to use it later when we do volumes and other things. So that is why I'm using it this way. So it's a half base times the height and there are four of them so if we had to make this a little bit easier to read it would be a squared plus a half of four is two two times a h s okay let's look at a triangular prism now a triangular prism has a base that is a triangle so again the total surface area is going to be the area of the base plus the area of the sides. Okay, so the area of the base is a triangle and if you see here you can see that this is an equilateral triangle. So if that is 8 it means that this is 8 and that side there is 8. So the area of the base is going to be in this case a half times by the base times base. Okay, the the base, in this case it's 8, that is 8, B I mean, times by the perpendicular height, it's the height of the base, and that is what that HB means, it times by the height of the base, plus you'll notice that since the base has got three sides, that there are three sides to this pyramid, there's one, there's two, and there is three, so there are three triangles, so it's three, times by a half and the base in this case would be 8 okay but again I'm just going to write B and this 12 is what we call again the slant height so this here is what we would call the slant height HS so it's going to be 3 times a half times HS so now if we put these numbers in but they haven't actually given us an HB let me give you an HB of I don't know 10 so let's try this okay so it would be a half times the base of 8 times the perpendicular height of 10 plus 3 times a half times the 
base of 8 times the perpendicular height of 12. Okay, so this cancels that, so we've got 40 plus 8 and 12 is 96. 96 divided by 2 is 48, so we've got 3 times 48, which is going to be 40 plus 3 eighths are 24, carry 2, 3 fourths are 12, 13, 14. So we've got 184 centimeters squared. So that there is our total surface area if I make up the number of that to be 10. I think it's more likely to be 12, but never mind. It's not important now. Okay, so that there is how we would find the total surface area of a triangular prism. Let's do another example. This is the surface area of a right cone. So again, it is the area of the base plus the area of the walls. Now for you guys, you need to learn this because the area of the base is easy. The area of the base is just a circle, right? So that's just pi r squared. However, you do need to learn this bit here because it isn't obvious and there is no proof that you need to know about. So the area of the walls is a half times 2 pi r times the slant height. So it's a half times 2 times pi times r times the slant height. And in this case, that line there is the slant height. So that there is the slant height. So that would actually be your hs over there. So obviously you could simplify this to become pi r squared plus a half times the 2 goes away. So you get pi r h s squared. But that is the slant height, the slant height, and that's very important. If you use a normal height and not the slant height, you don't get the total surface area of this cone, you get something entirely different. So that you need to learn. Okay, the sphere has a total surface area of 4 pi r squared, and again this is one that you're going to have to learn because it is not intrinsically obvious and you have to be able to work out your total surface area by knowing that of a sphere it is 4 pi r squared. And that's it for total surface areas of these funny shapes. Please go make sure you can work them out if you you need to go learn the one for the right cone and the one for the sphere to make sure you get it right in the tests and exams. Have a lovely day, grade 10s.